The sock and the endorphin speed was considered by many to be the best running shoe of 2020. But how does the update perform in real life? Today, let's explore the sock and the endorphin speed too. Hey, what's poppin'? Jordan Thomas here, helping you simplify tech and running to improve your life. Today, I'm here to talk about the endorphin speed too. Now, last year, I unfortunately wasn't able to try the shoes out. You see, I bought the Endorphin Pro beforehand. I was training for kind of like 800 meters through to 5K. It was a pandemic going on, and so I just happened to miss this shoe. But I was pleasantly surprised that a number of people said that this was their favorite running shoe of 2020. And so when Saucony reached out to me about reviewing the second version, I was like, definitely like, I wanna feel like my man Carlton on speed when I put these shoes on. And so because so many people had talked so highly of them, I couldn't wait to test them out myself. So let's begin with the overall design. Beginning with the upper, this is where significant changes were made from the previous version, beginning with this, color, this colorway that they're calling Reverie. I think this is actually a nice touch to the overall look. It looks a little bit wild on camera, but I promise you in real life, it is a bit more subdued. As long as you kind of stick to like very like standard colors when you're rocking these, you'll be fine. This upper is a little bit more refined from the previous year, a little bit thinner, some additional like perforation in there to make it a bit more breathable. The laces are a little bit more thick uh, than the previous version where it was kind of like a lay flat um, type of situation. You have a gusseted tongue, which just means that it, the tongue is gonna be like interconnected so it won't move around too much. There's a slight bit of padding along the collar, which offers just some nice uh, level of cushioning. The counter isn't like too structured, but this is more of a training shoe. And so that's what I would anticipate. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with this kind of pseudo pull tab. I think they should just either glue that together or given this a, a full pull tab treatment. But overall, in terms of just looking, looking at the upper, I like the uh, updates that they made to the shoe. And so when it comes to fit, one of the things that I think Saucony does incredibly well is offer a true to size experience. So I went with 11 and a half, a very spacious toe box, nice and secure midfoot, and then a, not, uh, a secure, but not like overly secure heel which I found uh, really helpful. I did find that with the toe box though, these uh, appeared to be like even wider than that of the uh, Endorphin Pro and Endorphin Pro 2. So that's just something to keep, a, keep an eye out for. Now let's move on to the midsole. As I always say, the magic, the show, the sauce, all of those things you're gonna find in the midsole. But what makes this one very unique is that instead of featuring a carbon fiber plate, it's featuring a nylon plate, which allows for a bit more of like flexibility, not as rigid as the Endorphin Pro. And what you get with that is a little more flexibility in terms of this overall use. Now what you'll find in this, as similar to the Endorphin Pro 2, is that Power Run Plus PB midsole. I find it to be soft-ish, it, but it still has some level of like firmness in it, particularly in the forefoot. So that's something you wanna keep an eye out for in, in trying these out. And then the outsole is actually pretty standard. It's not really a whole lot going on there. Some rubber towards the forefoot, exposed foam primarily. Just kind of got the rubber where you need it. Not too much going on. I'm a fan of this pattern, um, but that's just something to keep in mind. Now, one of the other things, nice things about this particular shoe is that this sits like right in the middle of the overall endorphin lineup. So you've got the endorphin shift, which is supposed to be something that's more of kind of like a daily trainer type of thing. You've got this, which I believe serves as a really great like training slash racing hybrid. And you've got the Endorphin Pro 2, which is the kind of like pure race day type of opportunity. Let me know in the comments, like, do you like training and plated shoes? I'm starting to kind of like lean away from that. Like, I don't mind racing in them, but when I train, I like to train with a shoe that doesn't have a plate in it, because that way I can get the best out of myself before I add on that one little last thing when it comes to racing. In terms of performance, the best use, I believe, of this shoe is going to be those situations and scenarios where you're going to either be running fast or running long and kind of sort of fast. So think threshold type effort, think tempo, think in like longer intervals, like 1Ks. And so if you're training for anything from like the 10K to the marathon, this is a shoe that you can get a lot of range out of, which I think is actually pretty impressive because it won't beat you up as much as wearing a carbon fiber plated shoe. However, you're able to still get a decent level of like performance gains. Now, a couple of watch items that I would consider when you're thinking about these though, is one, ground contact. When it comes to like a racing type shoe, I like to be able to feel the ground with the exception of one shoe that we won't name here. But in terms of thinking about a shoe is like purely fast, I think ground contact, I think being able to like grip the ground. I, I found that I struggled a little bit to do that with this particular shoe. Also, 
The way that the cushioning is set up, I found that the balls of my feet after running in the shoes were a little bit sore. It's nothing really like crazy, but it's just something I think you should keep in mind. It could very well be that I don't run much in, in, in plated shoes anymore, except when it comes to like a race type effort. So it could just be my problem and not yours, but it's like to be forthcoming when it comes to that type of thing. The other thing I want to bring up is I did feel like this kind of like floating sensation. So I know a lot of work went into updating the fit. Well, I don't have the previous version to compare. I just have other shoes that I've run in. And I felt like my foot was separating from the insole a bit. So I don't know if I need to like tie the laces down a little bit tighter. But that to me, like once I actually got around, like I think maybe like halfway into the run of my uh, eight mile uh, situation. However, when I was doing like kind of like short surges, I didn't feel it at all. Next thing, durability. I think this is another reason why this shoe got picked by so many because you're gonna be able to get a little bit, you get a little bit more cushioning in this shoe versus that of the Endorphin Pro 2, which lends itself towards you putting in more miles on it. Now, I would not say use this shoe as an everyday shoe, but certainly the, the days where it counts, being like your, your faster days and your long runs, where you're trying to really get after it, you'll be in good shape there. Naturally, the shoe that I'll compare this to would be the Endorphin Pro. So I wanna run down a few things you keep in mind when you compare this to that. First and foremost, I feel like this shoe's gonna be one, it's gonna be more durable. Two, it's gonna be more flexible in terms of the nylon plate versus the carbon fiber plate. And it's overall, it's better price. It's 160 versus 200 bucks. And so if you're looking at more of like a value play, then that's something for you to consider. Now the two things I think the Endorphin Pro does do better is that one, it's the responsiveness because it is a little bit thinner in terms of the amount of uh, power run PB is in there, you're able to get quicker turnover a bit faster. And the other thing is, is that it's going to be a little bit lighter weight. So you're going to get a thinner upper and just an overall lighter weight shoe. So I've already mentioned it, but the price is coming in at 160 and it's going to be available on June 15th. So in terms of my overall recommendation, if you're training for the 10K to the marathon and you're looking for like one of like the best shoes that you can buy in terms of being a great training slash racing option, look no further than this particular shoe. I would say though, if you're training for a 5K, you might not pick this one up. You might want to look to something else in the overall Saucony line. I would say actually maybe even the Endorphin Pro 2 would be a better option just because it's a little bit more lightweight. You get a little bit of a different type of ground feel. Consider this as one of the ultimate training slash race day options that you can find, particularly if you're training for something like a 10K to the marathon. Think about pairing this shoe with something like the Triumph and you can tackle anything from that range with only using two shoes. And I'm a big fan of using the least amount of things possible to accomplish the goal that you're after. And so if you can do it with two shoes and be able to train from a 10 to a marathon, then you found a shoe that can do that. With a wide range of application and a competitive price, the Endorphin Speed offers a legitimate training slash racing option in real life. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video valuable, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. It helps the video surface to other people. And if you found this video simply explain, why don't you leave me a comment that says just that. I love hearing your feedback and want to do what I can to make these videos simply explained. If you want to check out more on the overall endorphin lineup, check this video out and I'll see you next time. Jordan Thomas, peace.